Hi, my name is Willix, and this is episode 10 of Modern Skyblock 3. Well, today we're going to automate a runic altar with very limited stuff, so it's almost vanilla in the way I'm doing it. We're also going to spend some time on a new uh, sorting system for mob drops and loot bag openings. We're going to use some buildcraft pipes to do that. We're going to automate the melting of the armor, including some factory tech piping. And let's get started. So, we're going to need a few things to automate this. We need a dispenser. That's just a vanilla dispenser, nothing special about it. The runic altar, of course. We need another wand of the forest. We need an open crate. That is living wood planks, not living wood. And the only non-vanilla thing I'm using is a ranged connect collector from actually additions. I'm using that because it has a bigger wait list than the hopper huck does. The other option is you can use a hopper huck, but you must use frames to control the wait list on it. So the first thing you need to know, if we place down a dispenser and then we put a wand of the forest in it, Every time I give it a redstone signal, it will try to click this altar with that wand of the forest. We're going to need a few... Oh, let's get rid of a couple other things in my inventory here. That's going to go there so that these hopper, anything going to these hoppers is going to go to this open crate, which is going to drop down on top of the runic altar. I'm going to place this somewhere over here so it's out of the way and it's within eight of this. We need a few other things for our wiring here. So, something else you may not know. If we use a comparator here, right now it's doing nothing, so there's no signal at all. Once it starts to craft something, it'll give a signal of one, and it'll go that far. So if we add a repeater in here, when it starts to craft something, this repeater is going to power that block there. When it's finished crafting, it'll get a signal of two. And if we put a repeater there, and redstone there, when it's finished crafting, this repeater is going to charge that redstone, which is going to charge that block, which is beside the dispenser, and the dispenser is going to click once with the wand of the forest. So over here, what are we doing? We're going to put down a redstone torch there, and then we're going to give it an on-off switch. So I've clicked it to on, which turns off that. So when this is on, the system is off. So this won't be able to turn on. This is working like a, a NOR gate here. Or an AND gate. I forget which that is. And then the redstone runs up here. So when, when the redstone torch is on, it powers this block, which powers the line going up here. Notice that I used um, half slabs here. You could probably get away with full slabs, but I'm trying to make sure it doesn't touch these and affect these hoppers at all. As I said last episode, Redstone on top of a half slab will not power the half slab, but it can run a redstone signal across it. So this all comes up here like this. Then we drop down a repeater there. Another, whoops, come on. And we're going to set the repeater as long as this one will go. You could use uh, one of the better repeaters. The uh, yeah, You could use one of these advanced redstone repeaters instead and set it to a much higher number, a couple hundred ticks instead of four ticks. It just means you'd be less likely to pick up the uh, living wood. See, the not living wood, sorry, the living rock goes in there at the end. So that's why there's a slight delay before the rest of it. 
All right, so let's go over this again. When this starts to craft, it sends out a signal, which hits here, charges this block, changes the power on that, and boom, up goes the signal. The droppers all drop one thing in these hoppers. The hoppers drop them on into the living crate. The living crate drops them onto the runic altar. All right, so let's try something out here. Let's actually get rid of that, or I'm going to get myself confused. And grab these. We'll only do a small batch for just now. So we're going to make one manually first. So as, if all those things had just dropped down on it. Oh, we need to give it power. We never gave it any power. Or mana, I should say. So we're going to point a bunch of these guys at them. Now these two can't point at it because these get in the way. So I am going to use... I bet you I picked up the living rock. Yeah, I did. Can I think this one can get over from there. No, I didn't get it. Yeah, I don't see a uh, bad bubble in the middle there. Okay, so that's working out. What we can do with at least one of these... Oh, I pick, used a pick instead of the... Where'd it go? There it is. grab one more mana spreader because the more you put on it the faster it works there we go that's ah, quite a few of them that should work just fine let's give it that one living rock I picked up from it from getting too close and I'll need to man or actually, I guess I never gave it to it. That's right. All right. So we got our two runes of fire. So we put it there. And now it's going to pick up any runes of fire that it gets. So this is how the system works. We open this up. We put some in there. Next thing goes here. Next thing here. This is meant to be done in batches like 64 or something, but uh, four, four is going to be enough for you to see what's going on. And then I'm going to change and do something even more interesting. Turn the switch on. Drops all the stuff. Starts its thing. And we'll let that run for a sec. Show you that it's automated. So all this is kind of new here. I wasn't there last episode. So I put down these mana spreaders that are collecting from all these flowers, had to bind each of the flowers to it, immediately to a mana pool. These mana pools were being feeding this mana spreader, or these mana spreaders on top, and pointing at those up there. Eventually, this mana spreader will go away and be replaced by sparks. I'll use recessive augments on these sparks. I'll use no augments on the sparks up there and dominant spark there. And I'll move my man around that way. I did make another change here. Um, let's fall off the edge here. I put in these uh, little hovering hourglasses. I'm probably going to pick one up now as I come up here. But you can see there is a redstone repeater hit there. So it is affecting this block there when it hits. Um, I think I got 32 sand in there. I maybe should have used 64. See, it just it fired it off so it gets an extra piece of uh, wood. The reason I had to use it 
is every time I log out, there's no wood on the plates, so the whole thing would be down, and I'd have to come over and manually start it. Or if I walk past it and pick up a piece of wood, it stops. So this just means that every once in a while, an extra piece of wood fires, and then I don't have to worry about it. So let's come up here and take a look again. This thing's probably finished by now. Yep, so we got our 10 uh, runes. Now, some of the runes are a little more interesting to make. For example, the water rune. It takes a fishing rod. Fishing rods don't stack. They're a pain in the butt to move over here. So let's make that easy on you. Let's do it in an interesting way. We're going to use a structured crafter. Now we're going to do it that way. So I need some building blocks just to build my way up there. And we're going to drop our structured crafter in like that. It's pointing in the right direction. Whoops, that tiny chest didn't belong there. Oh, and the other thing we're going to do while we're up here is come over here, and I'm going to put a block right there. Now we can go down a little bit. And we need to put in whoop, one under there. I have two that don't belong there. One that I placed by mistake, and that one just so I could place the other one over. There, I got those two back. No, it's sitting on top of this. and there's five up there. There should be one more around here somewhere. I don't know where it went. It's not on that, is it? I don't know where it went. Doesn't matter. Okay. So, oh yeah, we need the lever and those things. So we'll put the lever up here. So why didn't I put the lever directly on the structured crafter like I normally do? Because it would affect this dropper here. So then what we do, open up that top one there, it gets sticks. All of these ones down, running down on an angle like this get sticks. When you're setting up, remember, I'm working from the back here. That would be the front of our crafting table. So you sort of do everything in reverse. So that is going to make, when I turn this on, fishing rods. That was awfully quick. Was it already on? Nope. That was really fast. And I need one for right now. And then this is the rest of the stuff for that. So we're going to make one manually first. And we need to take one of these. Drop it on top. Now why did it get an extra fishing rod? I don't know why that happened. And I don't know any way to get it back up in there. Oh well, I'll just have to put it on at the end I guess. Okay, so that looks all ready to go. Right? Oh no, I haven't put the... So 
that has fishing rods. This gets there, 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 and the loading rock. Now when we fire it off, Oh, that's why it got an extra one, is because I hadn't uh, flicked the switch on and off. Oh, I forgot to put these in here. Well, that was good. That's why I did it manually, so that it would suck those up. Oh. I have blown it now. I put it in the wrong place. These were supposed to go there, not there. So now I've got to unload everything. Stand back a bit. Yeah, this is not the most fault tolerant system in the world, that's for sure. Now it should work just fine. You've got the general idea as to how all this works now. It's automated making water runs. Enough on that. Moving on. Our new loot bag sorting system. So I've got one drawer for each of the loot bags and I've got hoppers underneath. By the way, I don't think I get blues or oranges. I just did it that way in case I got them. It would feed them in. And those feed into bag storage. Bag storage has hoppers under it, leading into bag openers. That part's all pretty obvious on how it works. Then we come down here, and under each of the loot bag openers, we have a wooden pipe. The wooden pipe is being powered by two redstone engines. It would be faster if I had four wrapped around it, but uh, I just didn't do that. And the wooden pipe leads into an iron transport pipe. It's got to be iron. The reason is iron only has one direction that things can exit from. So notice how it's solid right there, solid right there, and then it's clear there. So that means it can go in that direction. So everything is being forced this way. Otherwise, these middle ones could go this way or that way. If they went that way, when they got to the end of the pipe, they'd fall out here on the floor. So we're forcing them all down this way. They get down to here and hit a clay transport pipe. It's trying to force stuff into the drawer um, slave. And whatever it can go in there, it will. Anything that can't takes the other route out. And that's whatever inventory is there, the drawer slave is being treated as an inventory. Then it's the gold pipe, gold pipe just because it's fast. And it comes over here and gets dumped in here. So yeah, the frozen cores, I need some something bigger. Apples, I need something bigger. This thing's filling up again. All right, anyways, so that's the sorting system for the loot bags. Now we come over here, and if you see up there, I've got an enderlick chest that looks just like this one. And there's an identical one up in my mob farm. So what's happening here is the stuff comes out of the mob farm to this wooden pipe, which this time it does have four wrapped around it and down to this clay transport pipe, which leads to that controller slave. These are just uh, oak trim to lengthen my drawers. Then anything that can go into the controller slave goes in there. What can't go in there gets fed to this diamond pipe. 
Now, I've started feeding, selecting a few of the things that are garbage. One of the Silent Gen's weapons gets rid of all the damage Silent Gem weapons. One bow will get rid of all the bows, regardless of their damage or enchantments. And then, I don't know what that's doing there. It should be there. That is my sorting system for this. Is there anything I didn't explain about that? I think that's pretty clear. All right. Oh, something else I added in. So this colossal chest is where it all gets dumped into. Then I've got a uh, diamond transport pipe here. So that means it's a filtered one. And I'm setting all the diamond stuff over into this chest. Because this thing goes getting full way too fast. And actually, I'm going to select anything in here that's worthwhile, pull it out. I pull out any worthwhile books, and then I'm just going to dump everything that's in it because it's filling up. What else have we got? Oh, while we're down here, let's show you this over here. So I have a crucible over a liquid magna, and it's making lava. And the lava is getting piped up through an extraction pump from Factory Tech. And it's using these pipes from Factory Tech. Now, those pipes you might find a little confusing because when we go um, pipe, you see all these pipes. The last thing you'd look at is this square block over here, which turns out it's a pipe. So NEI's or JEI is designed to confuse you. <laughs> So that is actually a pipe, regardless of whether it looks like a block or not. And it runs up and into porcelain tanks up above. So that's how the porcelain tanks are being filled with lava. Let's come over here. Go back up. Go all the way down here. And look at this setup here. So we've got our porcelain tank with lava in it and a porcelain melter there. The porcelain melter gets all the gold armor and gold horse armor fed down into it. And then when the gold gets in there, it gets fed through from this extraction pump to that porcelain casting basin. Notice I didn't have to use a clock, didn't have to use a, a faucet or any of that stuff. And when the gold block is finished, it gets pulled through there and put into this compacting drawer there. Same thing going on over here, only with iron. And the reason is this guy is taking up, oh, just filled. Okay. And I'm getting massive quantities of gold and uh, iron that way. The last thing I want to show you is how to get mushrooms for the runes of earth. So we're going to come over here and we're going to grab uh, from fishing we got some jungle saplings. So we'll take one jungle sapling, we'll drop it down here, grab some plant matter. And then we'll take our hatchet, not hatchet, uh, what's we call it? Just one of them? Oh well. And we'll come over here. I would have liked more than that. Oh well. Okay, and then we need cocoa. I only have one of those. I think that was the last thing I got. We'll put it there. And we'll grab... Is that going to be enough full meal? Maybe. Now we've got three. Oops, let's now we 
we've got nine. Seven. We need forty some out of these. Forty eight, I think. <laughs> I'll bet you we're just short. Let's do that one more time. Because I don't want to use up the last one of them anyways. We ran out of that. Well, we can get lots of bone mill. Whoops. I don't want that many. Oh well. I'd use more of the uh, plant matter, but uh, I've got so much bone, so many bones. I'm gonna have to start voiding it sometime. All right, we've got those. We've got this. We'll put them in our hand here. Oh, and we're going to need food on our bar. Okay, that's in our hand, and we right click, and we get ourselves a mushroom. Get some food. Right click, get another mushroom. Right click, get another mushroom. I don't think it's going to let me eat yet. There we go. Why not wear my armor? Why am I not getting extra health? Four, I need one more. That's five. That'll do. Clean up the rest of that stuff later. And we need, actually I still need that on my bar. I need a piece of dirt. And we need to put four mushrooms in our hand. And let's eat first. And we'll come over here. And where's about the middle of this? That'll do. Put down our mycelium, our last mushroom. Oops. And that's how you get lots of mushrooms. I think my, my mattock is broken. All right, and that'll get us mushrooms for the earth runes. Okay, well that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Go out there and have some fun. Thanks.